So my guest today, we've got Les Soldes with me today, and he's gonna, we're going to talk about mindset quite a bit. Now, I met Les quite a few years ago at a Tony Robbins event, and we've worked together at those events. And um, I've seen him guide people that attend those events and need some guidance with mindset and everything and breaking through barriers and limiting beliefs. And he's a, he's a bloody legend at what he does. So I've seen him in action. I'm not sure if you've seen me in action at those events, but um, he's a mindset coach, also an entertainer, and a few other things. So tell me a bit about yourself, Les. Oh, that, that's a good question. Look, thank you so much for having me uh, on as well, uh, mate. Re- really do appreciate it. So, look, what what I look, I started as a as a construction worker. Actually, I did that for about ten years, and oh. I kind of got fed. I, I kind of got fed up with that um, when I was about twenty nine. I think just because you know it, it wasn't my passion at all. Does yep. that make sense? Like it, yeah. it wasn't a it wasn't a passion of mine. I really look when I grew up, I had kind of my my childhood was was a bit tough and I, I learned every which way how not to be successful from my parents right and I think there's a lot of us out there that would agree you know that they've experienced the same thing so I had no idea how to um, do adult life right and so my dad just said you got to get a job so I got a job um, and the only construction worker that I thought would suit me was an electrician so I did that and you know what, four weeks in, I was like, this is definitely not what I want to do with my life. And I, and I managed to stick it out for 10 years. God knows how I did that. I think just because I was uh, trying to make a living, I didn't know, I just didn't have that self-awareness of I could, I could do better. I could be better. And, uh, you know, as a result of 10 years and, and yeah, coming to a very, very low point in my life, I decided that I needed to make a significant change. And that's when I came across uh, people like Tony Robbins. That's when I came across uh, inspirational speakers and, and they, you know what, we're talking about mindset, right? They, they express things on stage that I'd never heard before. Yep. I didn't realize you could, I didn't realize you could think in this particular way. I, you know, I thought the world was against me. I thought everything was against me that I was the victim in this life that I'd created that was, you know, terrible. And, uh, the fact that these people thought differently, they acted differently. It, it really inspired me. Like it, 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 it kind of woke me up, so to speak. You know. Yep. I was really, I was really living under a rock, but really living a very depressed, very anxious, and and very mediocre life back then. And it caused a lot of, it caused a lot of drama for me and a lot of uh, trauma actually. So yep. anyway, I, I hit thirty. I realized I've got to make a change, and uh, I realized. And this is how this is even how we met because I realized, mate. Not not only did I want to uh, be in that space, learning from people like that, I wanted to like the question that I asked myself. And this is what Tony Robbins says, right? Your life is is dependent upon the questions that you ask yourself, right? Yeah. And I I, I asked myself not only how can I learn this, how can I be in this space, but how can I get paid to learn this stuff, right? So I literally packed up everything I owned, mate, jumped in the car and drove down to Sydney. I had no other, I had no job lined up at that stage. I just knew that I wanted to work with these guys and be alongside some of these thought leaders and, and some of these people that were inspiring me to actually make significant changes. And what happened, I got obsessed in this space. I not only learned from Tony, but I learned from T.R. Becker and I learned from Robert Kiyosaki and I learned from Grant Cardone and Gary Vee and like all, all of these kind of big names, but not only them, all like hundreds of little guys as well. Like I got obsessed, mate. I went into every single uh, seminar that I could get my hands on, you know, free and or paid. I spent thousands of dollars doing this, like like tens of thousands of dollars doing this. So I just got obsessed, obviously ended up starting working with SR and working with Tony Robbins. Yep. And I, I, I you, you know, just just took one step at a time in this space. It wasn't as easy as it, as it sounds. I didn't just go from being a structure, construction worker to, to working alongside these guys. I had to make significant sacrifices and not all of them worked. And, and also too, I had, I wanted to be an entertainer, right? So I came to Sydney kind of wanting to, wanting to get into the personal development field and wanting to be an entertainer and having no idea how to do it. So, oh, well done. you know, I, yeah, I just, things just happen like you know when you when you change the way you think right it's Mm. going to change the actions that you take it's it's so simple right but then this is how it works right so if you change the way you think you've still got those 
self-limiting beliefs that are kind of <laughs> drilled down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, so even if you take different actions, self-sabotage is going to, it's going to rear its head because of the beliefs that you have. You still have this connection to who you think that you need to be. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and we can delve deep into this, but I just, mate, I, I just put one foot in, in front of the other, decided that this is where I wanted to go and have made so many um, sacrifices along the way. I'm still not where I want to be at all, no, but it? I realized, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and, but I realized through this that these guys inspired me. And so this is my mission uh, for others. Does that make sense? Like this yeah, that is my makes mission sense. for others. Yeah. Life yeah. is a journey. So uh, just for yeah. our listeners that may not know what limiting belief means, can you give me your description on it, please? Uh, limiting belief. Yes, of course. Uh, so look, we, we, a belief is something that you know that you feel is true, right? Now, uh, there's a, yeah, there's a really, really good quote, right? Yep. And I, I could, let, let me, um, I could get the guy's name. I can't remember that, but it's like, it's not what we know that is the issue for us it's what we it's what we know for sure that just ain't so yep that's going to get us in trouble and so that's that's what a limiting limiting belief is it's something that you believe to be true but it's limiting your ability to be a certain way and you actually hold to the truth of it you think it's true Mm -hmm. right and and the worst part is these limiting beliefs, a lot of these, we don't even know that we have, yeah. right? Yep. Right. We don't even know that we have them until they come up at a particular time. And it could be anything. It could be something like, I'm, I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too this. I'm too that. Do you, you know what I'm saying? So it could be, you know, like, oh, I can't do this because I didn't have a father growing up or I can't do this because... You, you know, um, my, my parent passed away or I dealt with this or I dealt with this, you know, or I'm not good enough for this that's, or that. And That's and, the one that all the clients that I've done mindset with, that's the one that comes up all the time. Subconsciously, the un- I'm not yeah, good yeah. enough because my definition is between ages of naught and seven, you get programmed pretty much, conditioned, and um, you have all these beliefs like you might hit a, cricket shot and your dad or you says no you didn't do that right so then you start thinking well i'm not good enough and i that's it's just right. through those sort of little incidents when you're two or one or three it doesn't matter what age but generally conditioned between the ages of zero and seven and all these subconscious patterns which are i'm going to call them bad patterns um control you but you're not aware of it so being a mindset Absolutely. coach and i'm sure you do this as well um we tap into the client's subconscious and alter that and uh, guide them in a safe way in order to understand themselves more. And um, it's huge. So thanks for explaining that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Recently I did a 10-day silent meditation retreat. Which one? Vipassana? Vipassana, yeah. Oh, how'd you go? Yeah. Look, uh, to be completely honest, it was one of the hardest things uh, I've ever done in my whole life. And it was the second time I did it as well oh okay okay right but without a shadow of a doubt it's one of the hardest things that i've ever done but the best part i think one of the best parts about this particular program and i recommend it for everyone because you know it's like it's like a 10 day uh fast from everything right from everything you can't talk you don't have access to your phone you don't have access to reading materials writing materials nothing yeah right and, and when you do it for the second time, you eat breakfast and lunch and then you don't eat again. So it's about a 19 hour fast as well. Right. Yep. So you, you, so you're not, you're not eating a lot. You're not doing anything else other than being in your thoughts and meditating for about 12 plus hours a day. Right. So, yep. Yep. It's, it's incredible uh, because what it, what enables you to do. So just like you mentioned, you help your clients tap into their subconscious. Right. And this is something that, a lot of personal development <clears throat> explains, uh, but they don't kind of hit it. They might miss part of how to access it. Yep. And this, this course teaches you how to access 
your subconscious oh. because most yeah most people <clears throat> like if i asked you the question even yourself and you you might know because you've done a lot of work here but where does the subconscious lie it's in your uh, reticular or- ras i call it the reticular auditory system i think it's called it's absolutely right? there it's absolutely there but you know it's in every single cell of your body oh wow we've got a lot of cells it's- listeners a lot of cells i don't know the number but there's plenty. It's in every single cell. Wow. Because every single cell has memory. Yep. Right? Every single cell has that memory. And what's happening at a core level throughout every sing- each individual cell of our body is it's working to obviously keep us alive, right? And everything that is happening inside that we're not aware of, right? Like, for example, you're breathing in and out right now without even, without even realizing, right? And you, you're not doing it. Your heart's beating. You're not thinking about making your heart beat, right? You're, you're not thinking about making your digestion system digest. So all of this mm. is happening at this. This is happening from the subconscious level. So the subconscious kind of talks to every individual cell right to continue doing this and that's you you kind of have to tap in to the entire body to make these significant changes and that's what i loved about tony robbins is because his one of his you know most powerful lessons is physiology uh will change your psychology yeah yeah right and that's the core of it you can only change your psychology through your body you can only you know reach that that point of bliss through yoga through your body right and through meditation, you've got to focus on, on each individual sensation in your body to be able to reach the state of awareness. It's just, it's the most incredible thing I've experienced. Yeah, I've been wanting to do it. Did you do it in Blackheath? I did, yeah. yeah that's the home of that of Vipassana in Australia, and um, yeah. I'd love to do it there if I was going to do it. It is in Melbourne, but it's very hard to get in. But It uh... is very hard to get in, <laughs> and it's the most incredible thing because it's donation only. Like, you can only donate once you've done the 10 days as well oh okay yep yeah it's incredible i can't say enough good things about it but the point is the subconscious is absolutely where these these uh, limiting beliefs lie right and and sometimes they lie so deep right and they're dormant until something happens in your life right and then they appear and Mm -hmm. our job right as 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 mindset coaches or our job as people to, to help other people become aware is just help them observe this when it happens and kind of see it in a space where we don't judge it right but we understand that it's there and Mm -hmm. it's and it's it's limiting us and so we need to either let it go or just be uh, equanimous uh, with whatever's happening right equanimity is such a powerful thing you know it's really such a powerful thing yeah, let it go. I like to use songs to anchor, anchor my clients, and it's actually a song that I use a lot. Not that I watch the movie because it's a kid's movie, but let it go, like the Frozen song. It's actually a really good song to anchor people into feeling good and just letting stuff go that doesn't serve them. So it's actually a song I use absolutely. to anchor people a lot. Absolutely. It changes their absolutely. state and their feeling. And um, I talk about our language a lot with my clients, like the words they use, how that can, anchor, absolutely. That can make them feel bad. And they're absolutely. not even aware and- of it. And one hundred percent agree. And this, this, and they're not aware of it because here's the thing: like you said, from zero to seven, right? So let's say the first three years, you don't really understand language. No, you really don't. No. So you you don't know the connotations that are attached to particular words. Yep. Right. And so obviously, when the big people speak these words, you're learning through kind of like modeling and through osmosis. So you're like, oh, okay, so this word means this, and this word means this, and like you, you know, you're, you're mentally and emotionally taking on these learnings, but you're not really aware of the learnings that you're taking on, right? Yes, yeah. It's like a guess. You, you, you're guessing, really. Well, that, that's, that's right. <laughs> and, and most of us, as we're guessing, especially if we're going through traumatic experiences, we're guessing that it's us. That's the problem. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're, yeah. Because there's no other way to think. Like they're angry and, and they're angry at us, so it must be our fault. Like it must be something I'm doing, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have that awareness to go, oh, no, these guys have got their own problems. <laughs> so, you know, they're just projecting. We don't have that awareness yet. Because imagine if you could at a five-year-old five, year, a five 
you know, five-year-old could be, hey, dad, um, you're projecting again. Uh, please stop it. You know, yeah, imagine yeah. that would be fantastic, right? <laughs> and you go, what, what's, what's projecting? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you, imagine, right, if, if you could be like five years old and you're like, hey, hey, dad. It's enough. You, you're angry again. Uh, work out your own issues, please. <laughs> you know, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't eat for a week. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it, right? See, but this is something that I, I try and teach my, my – because I've got two boys. I've got a five-year-old and a three-year-old. And, and I really try to get them to understand that if there's any particular, um, like, situation where anger arises, you know, I try to I – try, I, I always try to get them to understand that this is about daddy and what daddy's dealing with. Yep. And nothing to do with you. Absolutely nothing to do with oh, you. Perfect. Like if if there is something that you're doing that I don't like, I would appreciate it if you could listen to me and you could do what I asked. But there is absolutely, I, I tell you right now, I, I think there's no reason. There's absolutely no reason to get angry at a child for doing something and definitely no reason to be violent with a child for doing something, right? Because they don't know what they're doing, mate. No, they they just wing it basically with no rule book. My like parents, well, that, have, parents that, don't have a rule book how to bring up a child. So the parents yeah, winging it, the child's winging it, and if you, as a a coach, you're basically coaching your children. You're um, educating them along the way. They don't That's don't right. tell your kids off. Basically, say, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? This, this is what that might mean. Just give them options so they can learn. And well, also- that's right. And, and you have to realize everything that they're doing, everything they're learning is coming from you. So if they're doing something that you don't like, right, it's, <laughs> it's probably going to be a reflection of what you, of, of your bad habits, you know, like, or, or, yeah. your, or your lack of awareness. For just a quick example, if a child, it's about 9, 9 p.m. at night, a child is upset, screaming, running, having a tantrum, it's because I haven't. I, I haven't had the awareness that he's tired and he needs to rest, you know? So now he's overtired and he's, that's the only way he knows how to deal with things is cry and scream. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, so, yeah. But that's on, but that's on me. I didn't, re- you know, I, I've kept him up. I've kept him awake. I've, you know, I haven't uh, been able to comfort him and put him to sleep. And so now he's overtired and, and he's uh, throwing attention. So that's on me. So, but imagine if I get angry at the child, like how dare you throw a tantrum at 9 p.m. at night when you're tired and I haven't put you to sleep yet and I'm the one in charge, you know? Like it's just, yeah, yeah. Mate, so do you know what I mean? Like the awareness that you have when you're a parent is, is next level if you can understand these, these limiting beliefs, these, you know, how, the, how mindset works, how subconscious works. Oh, it's uh, next level parenting. Yeah, it would be. And it's, I, I assume being a parent has taught you how to be a better Mindset coach with your clients as well. Without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. Because I realized that we're all, yeah, we're absolutely all, like you said, we're all still learning. Yeah, yeah. I learned something really cool on the weekend and I never thought of this before, but what's your background? Like you're Australian, obviously, but do you have a, what's your background? uh, Nationality? Yeah, born and and raised Aussie, uh, but my father's from Argentina and my mother is Swedish. So... Mix, mix from different parts of the world. Yeah. So do you speak a language that's not Australian? I speak, I speak, uh, I speak a lot of Spanish. So Spanish. Um, but, is I your, don't, yep. but I don't speak it fluently. What I learned, I learned uh, from a result of traveling because I think my parents, they came to Australia and because they spoke different languages, they communicated with English. So that's what we had growing up. So I didn't, yeah. I didn't learn it from either of them, uh, but I learned it from, from my travels uh, overseas. Oh, okay. But so your parents only spoke English when you were growing up. Is that correct? Yeah. But what I learned on the weekend, which was interesting, so a lot of people in life have had adversity or trauma or bad things happen to them, is that, you know, in Australia, mostly everyone speaks English. But what I learned on the weekend was if your parents spoke, say, Italian or a different language, and they told you off in Italian, that trauma is associated with that language and you have to deal with it in that language. Like I've just gone, wow, never actually um, thought about that before. But um, Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. That's so interesting. I'd, wow. 
because I got a, I went and saw this person on the weekend and she said, do you speak another language? And I said, no, because everything was in English or Australian or whatever you call it. Then another girl got up and she tried to release her trauma when she was a child and she was speak, talking to herself in English and it didn't release. But then the lady asked the girl, what was your nationality growing up or what did your parents speak? And what was it? It was Spanish actually. And she asked the question herself in Spanish, the, the client, and it released. So I'd never thought of it that way before. And it's just like, wow. wow. And wow. it's something that I learn on the weekend because I just love learning. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm so, an avid learner, yeah. as you can see, with, yeah, with the books behind you. Truckload of books yeah. behind you. So that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love learning. I, uh, just because I didn't, I didn't do well in high school. And I think it, it came back to one of these be- limiting beliefs, though. You know, like I, I felt like because I didn't do well, I didn't study. I, I had a, Same. you know, like a troublesome childhood. So I thought to myself that I wasn't smart. I actually thought that, you know, like I thought like, cause my, my a sister of mine, my sisters were kind of book smart yep. and I thought I, I was not book smart at all, you know? And then this all changed when I turned 29 and I was like, you know, it, going through the depths of, of hell. And I picked up a book, and that's what got me into the personal develop- what development book? space. Uh, it was actually it was Gary V. Um, Cash in your passion. Perfect. Because because I was like, you know, absolutely struggling through working in that industry and working in that job, and I was like, I, I swear that there's something else that I'm supposed to be doing in life, you know? Yep. Like, but I but I didn't have the ability to. This is what I actually thought i i had dreams but i just i honestly didn't think that i could chase them does that make sense yeah 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 yep yeah. So too like far I, away. Honest, I, I i honestly didn't believe that i could pursue my dream <laughs> <laughs> it's it's incredible when i when i when i look back and i and i think the things that i thought i'm like wow like, it's just such a dip, like, my mindset is completely, like, flipped, you know? Like, yeah, now, I, I, now I believe there's nothing that I can't do, <laughs> you know? It's the opposite. It's like, all right, what do I want to do? Let's do it. But obviously, I do realize I need to learn, you know, and I need to grow, and I need to, to, to do, to take action, right? There's a lot of things I need to do. There's a lot of steps that, that need to take place. But the learning process is, is what I absolutely love. And since that moment, I've read hundreds of books. Like, I, I don't think I've read every single book on this shelf, but I've read probably about 80, 90% of them. Yeah, yeah. And some books, some books either work. So for our listeners out there, if you read a book, and this is what I do, if it doesn't resonate and you're halfway through it, you're not meant to read it this time. But I've had books like that that I've gone back to years later and I've read it, but I need, needed it at that time. So even though we're mindset coaches, we aren't perfect. We're learning all the time, but we're getting more tools to help you. And um, well, that exactly good point. And and you know what, you you've got to keep you've got to sharpen the saw, right? Yeah. So that you know that's from Stephen Covey, right? Um, so what's his and, book? And, I know the book, but tell me the book. Uh, I'll say it. Five successful five. Is it five habits of successful people or something or ten habits? Something like the ten habits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I think it's the seven habits. Seven. No, it is seven. Yeah, yeah. Five. It yeah. is seven. The seven Correct. habits of highly, highly successful people. That's right. And and one of them is sharpen the saw. And I, when 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 I heard that, um, I was like, okay, I've got to continuously read and continuously, um, you know, gain knowledge. But obviously, you know, if you go to Google, it's hard to find the right knowledge. You know, I really feel yeah, like you yeah. need to. It's... You need to, like because there's a lot of books too. There's a lot of information out there. So. You know, and I, I do this for clients of mine as well. I give them kind of books that I really feel like would help them in that moment in time. Because like you said as well, if you pick up a book and it's really not resonating with you, then it might not be in for you at that moment. Correct. But then, you know, I've come back to books and gone, oh, wow, okay. And I wasn't ready for the information, you know? Yeah, like, I agree. Yeah, like when, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yes. Give me your top three you books, know. Les, to help that's probably helped you or you'd advise to your clients. First, first and foremost is is Gary V's um, cash in your passion, right? So yep. it's 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 not. I don't think it's 
I've probably got it here. Been, it's an old one because I haven't seen it actually. It is an old one. Um, one one second. Oh, you're right. For our listeners out there, so when I hear that title of that book off Les, um, I just think of Crush. a quote, if you do what you love, it sets you free. So that's what I think of. Absolutely. So it's called Crush It, right? Yep. So how to, how to cash in your passion. So that was like, that, that, that's, that was one of my top ones. It's not, it's not big or anything, right? And it's, and it's quite old. It's probably like 10 plus years old. Yeah, um, yeah. But I love, I, I love that. And then there's like Awaken the Giant Within, right, with Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a big green book, yep. And it, yep. Yeah. And then for me, I loved uh, uh, Grant Cardone's um, like 10X. Yeah, he's passionate, that guy. I've right. seen Grant yeah. talk. I've seen Gary V talk and also Tony Robbins. So yeah. just being in the presence of those people and their energy, it's inspiring. It's absolutely inspiring, yeah. And But see, those three are like kind of action, action, action books. Yep. But I, I absolutely love the spiritual side and, and how to learn that subconscious level side as well. And, and I'll give you three book, books for Perfect. that. You've got uh, The Alchemist, of course. Paul uh, Cahillo, yeah, Alchemist. read that. Yeah, yep. okay. Uh, the the Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle, right? yep. Listen yeah. to that. I've seen, I, I've seen him live on stage, like just the most incre- one of the most incredible speakers. Uh, and the third one is actually by um, Neil Donald Walsh. The com- conversations with God, actually. That's a right? book I've got. It's on my shelf. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's absolutely incredible, and it's not religious at all because the book sounds religious. It sounds like conversations with God, right? Um, but it's it's yeah, it's completely against uh, religion. I think just not because not because he's against God, but because of of you know the religion, uh, the religious side of. I suppose the sect, the business side of religion, yep. you know, yep. like I'm, I'm not against religion at all. I, I absolutely believe in, um, you know, sharing the knowledge of spirituality and God. It's mm. just how they, how they go about it is, I suppose, what's important for me, you know, uh, but I could, I could give you another 20 books. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I, I totally understand where you, where you're coming from. You pick up a book. If I ever pick up a book and I've, feel guilty putting it down that's a good book <laughs> that's right that's right so i know yeah. that i need to read it at that time and that's right and all of these have helped you know significantly open my mind to a completely different experience that i can have in life you know and as a result of that i've been able to go from a different opportunity to a different opportunity and uh and and you know to even to to call myself a mindset coach is something that i didn't even imagine uh, would be a thing. <laughs> you no, know? because your your mindset is at its peak pretty much. You feel and sense everything around you and you're high energy and you're calm at the same time and you just tap in um, tap into people quite easy. So, I yeah, the spiritual that. side plus the, um, we could say, probably technical side of those other books you mentioned um, definitely course. help you connect with your client a lot better. So... Absolutely, absolutely. Because we are right. Where there's so many parts of us, you know, you can't, you can't. In the the science of getting rich, right? He, he actually talks about this. You can't focus on just your bodily um, pleasures and and expect to be happy and successful, right? There's like there's three parts of us: mind, body, spirit. Yes. You know, and if you deny one of them, right, then you deny them all. But that's, you know, that's. That's what I truly believe. Like if you deny one of those parts, then you deny them all. It's like, and this is what I, I talk with clients about as well. Like there's two parts of us, right? Like you, everybody's trying to get away from that dark, that dark side, the things that they don't want to do, the bad habits, the, the you know, the, um, the addictions, the, you know, the things that they, they feel maybe they've done or they don't want to do. And I've struggled with this a lot in my life. But when you realize, Right, that each individual uh, cell in our body has an, a yep. neutron, right, like a negative particle and a positive particle. Then basically, if you try to deny the negative, you're denying half of who you are. Yeah. Yep. Right. So I'm talking mm. like this is breaking it down to the to the like you know cells and particles that we're made of, but half of us are negative and half of us are positive, right? And it's not. I'm not saying like it's like a magnet, yeah. isn't it? Like the polarities, exactly. it's like a magnet, in a way. 
We are it's, like magnets. It's, exactly. But so if you, if you, I'm not saying like be, you know, like be negative and, and that's all good. That's definitely not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you need to accept that there is that side of us. Right. And once you accept that, once you accept that, you accept the whole of who you are. And that means now you can move forward in such a more powerful way. And obviously, this is our job as coaches. We help people accept what's happening. Right. Except, OK, so let's say we've got a we found that limiting belief. Right. Or whatever trauma, whatever, whatever issue you found it. And now how do we how do we accept what's happened? And how do we move forward in a powerful move. way? Yeah, yeah. How do we move through this? Because you can't, you, you can't change the past. No. You can never ever change the past. Like I know you, you and you and me, we've been through some traumatic experiences, right? And it took me, mate. My my mother passed away when I was twenty two. It took me like eight or nine years to face that. Well, you know. Well done. At least you came out. It, it's, it's yeah. It's basically about making the first step. And look. My mum passed when I was 26, so it's about making the first step. And the first step for most people and what I did back then was uh, ate a lot and drank a lot. And yeah. I was grumpy for two, uh, at least a year, I reckon. And then my best mate's dad, who knew, who was good friends with my mum, said, I went to his house and said, look, I need help, Laurie. He said, I want you to read this book. And I, I have never, I've only read one book in my life. It was 1984 George Orwell in school. I didn't like reading. I read it. And I basically cried my ass off. And still to this day, the, when you do a seminar, I tell everyone this, even when we go to Terry Robbins, when you do a seminar one day, you read a book, there's one thing you get out of that day or that book. And it's the, the title of the book's called Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I yeah. had no idea what was going to be in that book. And the one thing I learned, and Les may have seen me in action with this, but the most important word in the English language is, I'll, I'll try you, Eddie. Do you know what it is? <laughs> What's the most important word in the English language? You read the book? I have read the book, yes. The most important um, word in the English language. You're talking about somebody's name. Correct. And that's the thing yeah. I learned from that day. So I made sure that when I met someone, I remembered their name. I've gone back 10 years later, haven't seen it, and I still remember their name. But that's helped me create rapport with people, uh, Layman's terms, people like you more. They think, well, yeah. you remember my name. And it's just like, it's, I just make a point of remembering people's names. And, and that was actually the turning point. You wouldn't think it would be, because, but it actually started me on the self development journey. Look, it's a big, it, that book, I tell you, you know what? I had an ex girlfriend that um, <laughs> she was reading it. And at that time when she was reading it, I was not in that awareness. And so I, like, and I'm going to be completely honest here, I kind of looked down on her for reading that book because I saw the title, like How to Win Friends and Influence People. I was like, wow. Had you know, nothing I'm, to uh, do with that, did it? Did it? Like yeah, the conversation I, with God I, book was nothing to do with God. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I remember seeing that title and then obviously when I got into this world, like that was one of the first books that everybody would recommend to read. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, So this was already around me, like, as I was experiencing in my life, but I just, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I had a mindset that was terrible. I just, you know, I thought that the whole world was against me, that it was, yeah, I just, it's so, it's so crazy to go to think mm -hmm. back, back to that time. But yeah, I absolutely love that book and it's so powerful. Um, what, what I really love about that book is it really helps you understand not how to influence people for like the bad, but how to understand people. Like the yeah. best, one of my favorite parts of that book is seek to understand. Yes. You know? Seek to understand first. And for me, that, that's so powerful because most people are not doing that. Most people are seeking to be understood. Yeah, you got right? two, two ears and one mouth, use your ears. Yeah. Listen more. Yeah. Yeah. Better to be seeking. interested than interesting. The things I do uh, to learn. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so powerful, even when you just make little connections for, you know, only temporary connections or, or like long-term connections. Like if you're seeking to understand where the other person is coming from in the smallest of conversation, then they're going to be, it's just going to create such a special bond, you know? 
it's it's like most people and and you know this right like most people when you have a conversation and for the people that are, are listening to this maybe you think about a conversation that you're having with someone most people are are listening to talk yeah i've right. been guilty of that listening. in the past that's all right i've, I've been there <laughs> i think we've all been there <laughs> Absolutely, we still do it. We're human, <laughs> yeah. right? It's it's a it's a conditioning that we have. Uh, but imagine if you were listening to listen, <laughs> like you know. Yeah, 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 I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, and then respond accordingly. But most people are listening with an idea of how they're going to respond. It's like, and and that's how people get like cut off. And and like I said, we're still human. We still do it, right? But you you talk to someone. And you're like talking to them and you're like, oh, you're, th- you're already thinking how you're going to respond, right? Like what you need to say, right? Because you're not actually trying to understand them. You're seeking to be understood. Yeah, and correct. if you just, yep. if you flip that, like it just changes the, the way that you communicate with other people. It really does. Oh, I agree. I was conditioned. My conditioning was not to listen. So it took me lots of years to actually hear people, but I was aware of it. Just you need self-awareness. So never knew why I couldn't hear, but then I thought back to my childhood and I'm going, oh, okay. Yeah, I was conditioned not to listen because my, my dad just basically spoke too much and I had to had to turn my ears off. Just spoke all yeah. the time. So I no, learned not enough. to listen. But I was aware of that now through all the self-development training I've had. So I just know I think, what it is. <laughs> and I, I'm right there with you. Look, I, I was definitely conditioned to not listen as well. And And if I... Even if I was conditioned not to listen, I wasn't taught how to listen. You know, it's called it's called active listening. Like I, I honestly believe like that's something that we need to teach in schools because we don't actively listen. We really don't. You know, uh, the, you know, you know. Actually, how I I learned this is because I, I taught myself how to dance mostly. Uh-huh. So I'm actively listening to the music, and the music is what moves through me, and I just. You know, ever since I was a child, I, I knew that I knew I wanted to be a, a dancer and a performer because the music always made me move. I, I can't explain it. Yeah. But the, the music always, I always wanted to move to the music. And, and I think learning how to dance is just a way to, to get your body to move the way I want it to move when I hear the music. You know, I understand. Yeah. The, um, I DJ occasionally and... One of my mates taught me this years ago and I wasn't aware of it. So if any of our listeners out there are struggling with their mindset, just put your favourite song on. The reason why is it'll anchor you in a positive, as long as it's a good song, I guess. But And you, you'd know this, Les, I reckon, but every song, no matter whether it's slow or fast, is, has got a beat pattern of four, and which is according to our heartbeat. So it actually, music relates to people because of the beat pattern it has. It's one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Every song, no matter fast or slow, is in accordance with your heartbeat. So if my clients are struggling with anything and they can't move forward, I'll find some songs that they maybe loved when they were kids that made them feel good. And having that song on, which is linked to their heartbeat rhythm, will actually get them energy and moving and stuff. So... Absolutely, and it takes them back memory-wise, right? Into and a good memory. That's right. And yeah. It can literally be, you know, in, in back in time in that energy, and it's so powerful, mate. I, I absolutely love music. Yes, the I only am. down the only downfall with music is it can be a trigger both ways. Yes, so if you if you're listening to sad song or a sad song comes on, you can literally go back to that 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 sad or that negative state as well. So yeah, it's good that you you make sure that they get the songs that that are attached to the, positive. That are, you know, that the trigger the positive, uh, you know, uh, flow. You know, that's right. I was with my mate yesterday having lunch, and um, some sad songs came on, which mine of his ex wife. We had, he had to leave, which I get. So songs can actually anchor you into sadness. I'm going to say, and that that happened for me years ago when when mum left. I could not. I loved music. I was the hoon in a country town with a fast car and a pump and stereo. But when mum passed, if I heard any song after mum passed while she was alive, I couldn't actually listen to songs. I had to turn my radio off. It was shocking. Right. Yeah, right. And it took me three or four years, but I'd turn the radio on the car again. I don't know how yeah, I well, got through that, but yeah. it just shows that every song. Look, I, I get it because it's anchored. It's anchored yeah. deep, you know, and that's, 
it, but that that comes back to the awareness self-awareness like that's yeah. i think self-awareness is one of the most uh, most powerful things that we could embark on um growing if that makes sense yeah yeah that makes you know total sense. like the, there's a there's a saying right know thyself isn't that right? a book no know thyself <laughs> oh it could be a book it, it could be a book as well but it's like i think it's part of the bible as well like know thyself right yep. like and i never really understood that concept because that what most people think is like like because let me ask you the question right what, what what comes to mind when i say those words know thyself just know yourself in and out know your good parts know your bad parts and just try to get your life more in the good area rather than the bad area yeah, so that's positive. It. So know I'll yourself say. inside and, and out. out. Yeah, that's it. Inside yeah. and out. So not just the outside, like not just what you like to wear and what you like to do and what you like to listen to, but know yourself on the inside. Like, who am I? Like, what are my values? What are my, you know, what are my strengths? What do I actually want to do? What are my desires, my hopes and dreams, my values? Most importantly, because like I've done some work with um, Dr. Di Martini, right? And right. he talks about he talks about your actions determine your values. So everybody thinks they value something, but I tell you, but he can show you what you value based on where you spend your time and where you spend your money. It's like, you know, it, it's it's like this delusion that we have, like we think, you, you know, there's so many things that we think that we know. And, and when you become more self-aware, then you're like, wow, okay, I actually don't know anything here. <laughs> I've kind of got to, I've kind of, start again. I'm kind of got to, I've got to go to start again, right? I'm going to go back to the old drawing board, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. I lost my train of thought there, but yeah. That's all right. And, and it happens as you get older. I, I know. I just turned 40, mate. So, oh, happy birthday. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And just, I, I, just turning 30 was a whole completely, completely different awareness level. But as I, as I turned 40, I think I've spent the last 40 years like studying myself. I didn't do that in my 20s. Ah, yeah. I did it in my, you know, but I did it in my 30s. And, and when you really truly know who you are, then, you know, I, I, it's like what you know, it's like you know what to say no to. Does that make sense? Like there's this saying, right? Like su success comes from not what you say yes to, but what, you, what your, your ability to say no to. Correct. Yeah, I agree. Right. I had a client with that. But I basically had to teach you to say no. Yeah. And it changed right. the life. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just, you're just doing things, right? And then you're doing things for people. And, and let's say you're someone who's a people pleaser and you, you're not aware, then you're just doing things left, right and center for other people and you're afraid to say no. And once you say no, then that's where you open up the space for you to do the things that you want to do, you know? Yeah, life's short. Like, it's, it's the craziest thing. <laughs> I, tell, I tell you it's the craziest thing, but coming out of Vipassana recently, and I should have had this. I should have had Doesn't this in the last 20 years. Mm. But, it, but I realized, like, that I don't put my happiness first. It's the craziest thing. Right? Uh, people pleaser, right? I'm living this life for myself, and yet, uh, you know, but because at the at the core of who I am, I absolutely value helping people. I really do, mm. right? And but what's happened is it's like I help people despite myself. You know. Yeah, so you haven't been helping yourself is what you're trying to say. You don't have been no, looking after less. I have been. I have been, mm -hmm. but I haven't been doing it to, to the highest level. Res and I'm yeah. still, like, there's a residual of me still putting other people's happiness in front of my own. Yeah, but I see you that know? as a positive because you're, that's what's brought you this mindset coaching because you love to help people. That's at your core, your core values. So you love helping yeah. people. And when you see people that you've you've guided, I like to say the word guide a lot. You've guided to change their life. It just juices you up because you've seen you've administered that change through the skills that you have. And that's right. But I understand what you're saying. On the other side of the coin, geez, I'm doing everything for all these other people, but I'm not looking after myself. So you got to put a bit of self love in there, and and life's short. You never know that's when you're right. going to leave the universe. So exactly, exactly. But you have yourself. to be. You have to be happy within yourself. 
you know like because this is something that's i've had a lot of clients and a lot of people ask me recently they would ask me what should i do right like a question for anything it could yeah, be yeah. it could be anything like what should i do should i go for this new job or should i go for this new opportunity or should i do this or should i do that and the for me now the the, the benchmark is does it make you happy you know yeah 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 yep does it make you happy now don't get me wrong not everything you do within life is going to be like joyful and and you know what i mean like yeah, no, um, what you what you want to do right but at the core are you happy when you're doing this yeah yeah you know yep. the decision to do this does that make you happy right imagine if we imagine if everybody had that benchmark like whatever you chose to do does that make you happy most people would not be doing what they're doing you know no, like what percentage of people work in jobs they don't like probably 90 percent. my guess would be yeah um, but not just that like not just that like you know simple things like if their partner wants a particular food when they eat out like most people are just like oh yeah okay like i'll go with that like you know like you really need to know and that comes back to know thyself you really need to know what makes you happy right and you need to know inside who you are so and and that comes back to awareness as well right but this is stuff man i did not know 10 years ago right mm. because i was not I was, I was not aware of who i am and what makes me happy and what i desire and my values and this is something that comes from like self assessment yep and a lot of a lot of education and a lot of reading and i you know, I, I implore everyone to do this. I don't think they will. <laughs> Just on that, I don't think they will. But I implore everyone to like study, like really study who they are and, and what they're about and what they want and what they need. And, and, you know, because if you don't know, then you're just going to be living somebody else's dream or somebody else's life, you know, mm -hmm. like there's these, there's these quotes, you know, that come out, you know, be yourself. Like, how did that even, like, imagine, like, l let me give you a scenario. Imagine telling a group of animals, guys, just be yourself. They would look at you like you're an, do you know what I mean? They'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Who else would I be? Mm -hmm. You know? I'm a lion, like, whatever. <laughs> you, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, if they yeah. could speak English, they'd be like, Les, what do you mean be yourself? I'm, I... I'm a kangaroo that who, what else am I going to do? <laughs> you know? And, and yet we've got these, and yet we're humans and everybody, a lot, not everybody, I'll take that back, but a lot of people are living like outside of who they are in many, many ways. Right. And it's so crazy. And, and I know because I, I've, I've been there for many, many years yeah, in the yeah. past doing mm. that. And I know, I know, you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Been there. Like, we're all trying to like be ourselves. And then when we find those people that are like a hundred percent who they are, you know, we call them crazy, right? Cause they're artists or whatever the case is, you know, yep. but we follow them. Right. Mm. So yeah, it's just, I'm super obsessed with that. You know, I think I'm getting, getting to, to turn 40. I'm like, finally, I'm going to like be who the fuck I am and that's it. And I'm going to do what makes me happy and, and not doesn't mean I'm going to, doesn't mean I'm going to like, you know, be negative in any way to anybody. I'll be compassionate, but I just, if somebody wants something from me and I feel like it's not going to make me happy, I'll compassionately decline. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, you don't have to say yeah. yes to everything because then if you say yes to everything to everyone, it takes away from energy away from you and then you've got yeah. nothing for yourself and it can be very tiring. And I've got a few friends that are healers or coaches and, they give so much to all their other clients that they're actually not doing anything for themselves and they end up getting ill or injured or sick or because they take That's on the right. client's energy. So you've got to look after yourself. Even if you're a coach and you're looking after people, you still got to sort of put yourself first as well. So that's what a lot uh, of people no, you, struggle you, with. You absolutely have to put yourself first. There's, you know, it always brings you back to that, that um, plane ride, right? You know, everyone talks about that. Like there's a reason why in, in a plane trip, Right. We haven't been on planes recently. I actually haven't been on a plane for about two years or something. Yeah, no, I haven't <laughs> um, either. <laughs> but remember, right? Remember that, that speech, you know, like if, if oxygen, if there's no oxygen, right, then what do you do? You, you get the oxygen mask will fall down and you got to, you know, you put it on your little ones first and then you put it on yourself first. No, 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 no. 
right? You put on yourself first, otherwise you can't help anybody else. If you can't breathe, you're not helping anybody else. That's it's right. simple. Mm. It's so simple, right? I love these these simple analogies, right? That just like bring it home to the fact that you've always got to look after yourself first. Like because once you do that, then you have more capacity. Like once you love yourself, once you're you know financially uh, independent, and w- once you know you're doing something that you love now and only now, is that going to give you the time and energy and space? To help others. Yeah, that's right, because they mirror off your energy and and all that sort of stuff. Go yeah, get that. Perfect. Um so if you had if you had a magic lamp and we don't we don't have the uh a magic lamp, but just assume we did and it took you back to the past and you were granted one wish, what would it be? And it may be at what oh, age? Oh, that's a big question. Oh. See, because the reason why I said that is I, I had an injury that happened when when I was uh, kind of mid-20s. Oh, yeah. Um, and that stopped one of my dreams kind of dead in its tracks. What was that so, dream? Tell us. So I, well, like I told you, I always wanted to be a dancer, right? I always what wanted sort? to be a dancer. So, what sort? So uh, just a dancer. I didn't really have an idea of it. But mm. when you when you break it down, like I I... I wanted to be like a performer, like a dancer and singer. So let's say, um, you know, along the lines of like Michael Jackson, like because oh, yeah. I was, cool. I was, I was a massive fan when I was like three or four. You know, I think there was this one point in time where my parents didn't get me, uh, like they were going to get me a, a gift for for a birthday, and I just, um, like I didn't sleep or I didn't. I didn't do something. I was like waiting and waiting and waiting for them to get this thing. Right. And mm. finally they, they finally, they got it. And it was the thriller album on vinyl. Yeah. Right. And that was like my most prized possession that I kept right through my adult um, hood. I think I still have it, um, but it's with a family member in Brisbane. Right. But I just kept it the whole way through my, my life, you know, um, and so I always wanted to be a dancer and performer like that. So when I hit about 24 mm-hmm. is when I, when I started actually dancing is when I was 24, right? Because I left, I, I wanted to dance as a, as a young boy and a teenager, but we really, yeah, we just didn't have the money for me to do that um, growing up. And then um, when I was in high school, I was kind of being bullied as well. So where, from where I grew up, just I was already bullied and like if I was going to be a dancer and a singer at school, there was only one other guy doing it. So I was going to get hell when I, yeah. if I did it. Yep. So I, I kind of left it and I just forgot, I forgot about it. I forgot about it. And when, when I hit 24, I came across like a, like a hip hop class and I was like just blown away and I just started doing it. And because of the fact that, I just always wanted to do this. I think I learned faster. Like I just had a, I already had like a, like a hidden talent. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. so I learned faster and I learned re- like I was already teaching by the time I was 25, right? So I was, I got really, really good really fast and I just really wanted to be like one of those backup dancers for one of those artists in, in the US, you know? So I was like, shit, maybe I can go over to the US. Maybe I can like become a professional dancer. You know, I just, it was something that I kind of always thought or wanted to do, but I never thought was possible. And and then what happened is I injured my ankle pretty badly. Yep. Right. I injured my ankle pretty badly and it made everything in my life turn. Wow. So yeah, everything, like even work, everything. Like I just, I've had two operations since I had an ankle reconstruction as well. But you know, the craziest thing is because of my injury, I, I stopped dancing hip hop and I changed to Latin dancing yep. and never did I think, never did I think I'd actually continue that dream and become a professional Latin dancer here in Sydney. Right. So like it, so, so for me, if I had a, uh, a magic lamp and I had to go back and change something, I'm not actually sure I would based on on the the series of events that have happened 
but maybe what I would do, mate, is I would make all of this happen from the age of 19 versus 29. So I've got another 10 years, you know. <laughs> hindsight, right. hindsight's a great thing, right? So yeah. no, we're trying to yeah. drill um, on what ifs, but hindsight's a great thing. But if you want to change your life, change it from today, from now. Luna. Your life starts yeah. now. Get out of your comfort zone. Go and do something you're afraid to do. For, all, for you introverts out there, just, just a quick tip. Just go and say hi to someone you don't even know. You're going to... You're going to be shit and bricks, basically. <laughs> but just go and say hi or do something way out of your comfort zone because when you go out of your comfort zone, that's when life starts. That's absolutely right. And and what I love, though, is is when I hear of clients of mine and also uh, clients' kids going to see Tony Robbins at like 18, 19, 20, I'm like, oh, man, like you, you just with that with that awareness and that mindset from the age of 20, like, you pretty much can do whatever you want to do in this life if you're able to tap into that, you know. So I think, I don't know, I would just kind of go back to 19 and, and have someone put a book in my hand, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. Here, read this. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, you know, here, read this and don't don't stop until you finish it, you know. like Because <laughs> I was 29 before I, I started doing any of that. Yep. But we started about the same age. I would have been about 28, so. Yeah, right. Mm. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Lise for coming on today, Mindset Coach, um, based in Sydney. I assume, like me, you help people online as well and also on the phone or in person. So watch out for this. Um, watch out for the links on this podcast. Um, any other thing you would have liked to leave our listeners? Any final quotes or books that you love or you there? anything? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, great, mate. It's such a such a pleasure to be a part of it. Thank you so much for having me. And if I can leave you with uh, one thing, right? And we, we've we've spoken about it as well. But there's, I think, someone one of my um, one of my my good friends asked me a question, right? What would what would I say to myself? So you're like, if I had a magic lamp, right? I'd, yep. I'd kind of go back to 19 and I'd hand myself a book, but I'd also, I'd also do a couple of things. I'd say what we spoke about. I'd say, make sure that whatever you do is um, going to bring you happiness and joy. Mm-hmm. Right. And if it's not, and if it's not, stop doing it. Right. Correct. And, and, and the, the last one is make sure with every bit of income that you make, save 10%. I mean, this is like, you know, our parents taught us that, but we didn't. Is, I didn't listen. My parents did not teach me that oh, at they? all. Oh. No, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, but save ten yep. percent. Don't touch it. Don't touch it, and learn how to invest it. Right. Yep. Like I don't care what you do. Read books. Find mentors. Doesn't matter. But learn how to do money and do money well. Yep. Right. Yep. And if you do, and if you do those. Like and the third one was obviously read, read, read. So educate yourself. If you educate yourself if you know and you learn how to do money, and you make sure it's about happiness and joy. Man, I tell you, like life would just be Goes such up. a different get. Yeah, life yep. would just su- be such a different game. You know, because yep. it is. That's exactly right. It's a game. It's a game. We're playing it, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're the player. We're the umpire. We're the creator of the game. Like we're everything, and we don't understand. You know, and and we still let someone else play the game for us. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it is Mate, crazy. A, absolute pleasure. Thanks, um, Liz. Look, for, look forward to hearing it. All right, take All care, right. mate. Thank Thanks. you. See you, Liz. Bye, mate. Bye.